Let's see what we can do for our sky here in the background. We actually have a few different options that we could use. We could set the background color of our document to be a sky color, and that would just fill in that area with another color instead of white. We can do that pretty easily. Now, right now, we're seeing properties that correspond to the current shape that's selected. But if we click away from everything, our property window always reverts back to document properties. And there's our stage color setting down here at the bottom. You can just choose any color you want, like, you know, some sky color or something like that. But that looks a little flat. What I'd actually like to do, let me set that back to white, is let's bring in a bitmap graphic with some nice realistic clouds and sky in it. Now I know I said that this was a vector-based program, but that simply means that we cannot create or edit any bitmaps inside the tool, only vectors. But we can certainly import bitmaps and use them inside of our productions. So let's go up to the File menu, and we'll choose Import. We have two basic options to choose from, Import to Stage and Import to Library. So what I'm going to do first is show you what the library is before we do our import. Let's move over here to our tool palette, and if you have the main settings set up from the first chapter, we should have the library palette available to us. Every movie has a library included in it, and as you can see, ours is empty. So let's import something in. If we go back to the file menu and choose import, if I use import to library, whatever we import will go straight to the library. But if I do import to stage, we can drop a copy of whatever it is right onto the stage as it's imported. If I imported right now, the current item would go into my mountains layer. So what we might want to do first of all is set up a layer for our new imported sky. I'll create a new layer and just rename that sky. And now since that's the active layer, we're ready to do our import to the stage. We'll go back over to file choose import and import to stage. Now the files for this series should have been installed on your desktop folder. So let me back out here just to make sure you know where we're going. We're going to go into the project files for Flash CS5 and we're going to go into the chapter 2 folder and there we have some nice clouds. Now this is a JPEG format but while we're here let's just take a quick look over at the formats pull down and you'll notice we actually can import quite a few different formats into the program. Of course, Illustrator and PNG files would be for our vector objects, but we've got Photoshop, Bitmap, GIF, JPEG, all kinds of different formats that we can bring into the program. There's really no limit to the bitmaps you can use. The only thing is that we cannot edit them with the Flash tools. So let's just choose Clouds, choose Open, and we'll bring it on in. Now, since we chose Import to Stage, our bitmap image was dropped right into our sky layer. Let me move over to the selection tool here, and you'll see that I can move it around behind the other layers. You'll also notice, if you go up to the library panel, that the clouds JPEG is now stored in the library. Now, basically, our library is a storage point for anything in our program that is going to be reusable. And what that means is we could actually use as many copies of this cloud JPEG as we want to, and only one of them will be stored with our file. And that's one of the great ways that Flash manages to keep file sizes small. If you wanted to reuse another version of the clouds image, you could just grab it right out of the library and drag it right onto your stage. And there you see we have two skies. Now since we don't need that, I'm just going to select that second sky and hit delete. And let's get the first one set up properly. Now I can click on it and select it and move it around behind the other layers, but why don't we hide the other layers just to get them out of the way for a moment. It'll make it a little bit easier to work. I can just click on the eyeball at the top to hide all the layers and then uncheck the sky layer and we can work on it by itself here for a moment. When I click on the bitmap, you can see that the bitmap properties come up over in the properties window, and there isn't a whole lot we can do with it compared to some of the other elements we've been working with, but we can change the X and Y values. Now you'll notice the size of this JPEG is exactly the same size as our flash file. So let's just adjust the X and Y coordinates so they're actually zeroed out. I'll just type in 0 for X and we'll move over here to Y and type in 0 for Y. And we can get that exactly positioned up in the upper left hand corner of our document. Now we don't need a full sky covering all the way down, we just need it for the top part of our image. So we can actually do one thing with a bitmap graphic and that is we can transform it. I'll switch back over to my free transform tool here, select my bitmap graphic, and you can see that the same handles appeared that we've worked with before. 
I'll simply squish this up so that it's going to be about half the size and then move it back up to the top of my stage and let's bring in the other layers and see how it looks. I'll do one click and a second click to bring all the layers back. That's not too bad but it's covering up my mountains simply because the sky layer is on top of the mountains layer. So we'll just drag that sky layer down one step and we can see that I've got a little bit of white peeking out so I might just pull that sky just a little bit taller and now we've filled up the space. Now let me just double click on the sun here and we'll pull it over into the a little bit more into the corner of the sky and we've got a nice sky background behind our valley now. 